Can you share what led you to Fort McMurray and why you think others should consider relocating here? I moved to Fort McMurray, the land of opportunities to come up here and work in oil and gas. My very first position was with Gulaski Trucking out in Aurora for shovel maintenance. They hired me as an administrator and I loved the window of opportunity. And I worked with them for many years and then was hired by Mamut Crane, where I had a very successful position. I loved my job. The community is the biggest one. I see more family services coming in, a higher caliber than I ever did. I moved here during the boom where there was nowhere to live. And we saw a big distinction between men and women population with a lack of families. And one thing I love about this community is the people. People are fantastic. What challenges did you face balancing your job and family? And how did that inspire your innovative venture? I worked shift working schedules. I worked some extended hour days. I worked out in Fort Mackay Industrial Park, so there was a bit of a travel. And when I had the birth of my daughter and went to go and return back to work, I could not find childcare that was going to cater to the needs of my family as me and my partner both work shift working schedules. Private day homes were slim and hard to find and they were inconsistent. Facility-based care after 6 p.m. was non-existent in this town. So I indeed forfeited my career. Not only was I starting to develop like the desire to look beyond, but I found other women who were in similar positions. Watching them juggle their lives and their children from private day home to private day home, or babysitting services, paying out of pocket, trying to get nannies to come into the space. It became gruesome. I decided to switch the pathway of my career and decided to go back into nursing. I did online school for LPN, and that is where I found an overflow of women who had children who were also juggling looking to do their practicums, couldn't complete their schooling because it required flexible childcare needs. So even outside of the traditional childcare hours, sometimes childcare was just required on weekends or a few evenings or sporadic days for their schooling and exams. And that didn't exist. With facility-based care, you pay your monthly fee and you call it a day or it doesn't exist. What needs did you see in the community that led you to create Fort McMurray's first 24-hour childcare facility? I think that there is lots of reasons why I opened the region's first 24-hour childcare center. Top three reasons I would say was I knew what it was to be a mom and have to pick and choose between raising your family and also holding a career. And I found that disheartening as I was a woman that was built to also have a career and raise a family. The second piece was I saw the demand in the community and I understood the value that it held, particularly in the healthcare field, and then oil and gas, which is obviously our bigger contributor here, and what that looked like for their female labor participation workforce, along with their less lock work time, and their economic stance on how we were going to help them fill positions predominantly with women who could return to work by offering these shift working schedules. And the third one is these families here need a higher quality of life. The vast majority of individuals come to this region with no extended family. They come with no support systems. And what they actually needed was someone to create a space and an opportunity that they weren't having to choose between being able to financially live within their means in this community or sacrifice staying at home because they didn't have access to quality and accessible child care. What 24-hour care does in our caliber is solidifies the family unit bringing a higher quality of life to everybody involved. And we know how that works when people show up better for themselves. What unique services does KP Squared offer to families at your daycare? We offer childcare, family food services. We support meals for the children, but also for the parents who are working overnight or extended evening care. And for overnight care, families are allowed to come and eat with their children prior to going to work and taking the bus out to site. We also offering a tutoring and homeschool program. So basically, families who are working 15 hours a day, when they pick up the children, the only thing we want them to do is to connect with their child. We like to get rid of everything in between, so the only thing they have left to do is pick up that child and connect and love, essentially. We also have an inclusive care program, which means we specialize with children and work with government funding to support children who have exceptionalities. We govern and run and support small independent day homes with our day home agency. We also uh, dabble into certain consulting when it comes to neuroscience leadership, building capacity in our educators to help them show up better for themselves to service the children and the families at large. Why do you think there is a lack of support for adults who are in the spectrum? I think the vast majority comes with lack of programming, but the bureaucratic process that comes with programming and funding for that. 
It is a gruesome process to get support systems or funding in place to hire individuals with exceptionalities or disabilities. It's a very long waiting game and also having access to the community that supports that. It's like a small underground realm. So we like to look at it from the perspective as enabled. What are we doing to enable the lives of individuals that perhaps don't fit in the box of our current culture? Can you tell us more about KP Squared's basement and what can be found there? I have a large 14,000 square foot basement place. We need to offer a sensory hub for children with exceptionalities and respite workers along with one-on-one -on -one aides to be able to support them in a way that we have yet to see in Fort McMurray. So we need to create 10,000 square feet and ensure that it is a magical dream for children with exceptionalities and then also a space for other respite workers to come together and socialize while they're doing their job to create that community feel. How do you think the city can enhance its assistance to entrepreneurs like yourself? For me in particular, the biggest one is ensuring that our municipality bylaws are matching provincial laws and that we're not overstepping as a community to govern industries that are already being governed by our provincial laws. Can you share what's on the horizon for you? My next plan is to continue to develop programming for inclusive care and to enrich the lives from a full family unit perspective. I think a lot of what comes with that is understanding government policy, particularly in family and child ministry. You we were already part of a very big movement where our agency worked with Rebecca Scholes and wrote the 24-hour childcare legislation. I would like to continue in understanding different kind of policy change and to also shake up the bureaucratic process when it comes to solidifying families or communities and continue to be a, a leader in that trailblazing way, particularly when it comes to like recreating a culture of community. I think it's very important. I hope to not only change the views and the model of child care in the province, but take it to a North American level as well. In the US, their mat leave is 11 weeks. Could you imagine placing your child at 11 weeks old back into the system is almost archaic when they don't have the adequate commitment to curriculum that needs to take place. It really comes back to building the family unit. People always say all the time, what's best for the child? It's actually what's best for the whole family and what is best for the whole family is indeed best for the child. We live in a current economy where moms can't stay home like they used to and some of them just don't want to. They wanna be able to develop themselves and be sure in who they are while carrying a career. That has been lost in trans translation and we need to come back into our family roots and start building to enable the whole family to increase the quality of life. With that comes a stack of precedent on what parental stress actually does to the development of children and how much of an impact that can actually lay into adulthood. When we start to relieve those pieces of parental stress and allow a space that can build and solidify the family unit, that is where we're seeing some huge change and impact on what culture looks like today.